What's going on? What's going on? Welcome to another Saturday's Conversations with me. Um, I do this uh, as a way and a means to communicate um, and answer questions. Uh, a lot of times, uh, if you're on this channel, you'll see me playing guitar and teaching guitar where I have a guitar in my hand and I'm answering. I don't get a chance to answer questions um, outright. So this is an opportunity just to, you know, have a conversation and talk about various things, whether it be like questions in the industry, where it'd be like gear questions, routine questions or whatever. I say for people when they're first coming into the room, it's always good to identify what city you're from. This is a networking platform, so you never know. You may see somebody from your city or from your hood, and you can connect and you can network. That's how you're going to grow in the industry if you're trying to get on, um, if you're just trying to meet new people, if you're trying to grow in your craft, you want to continue to network. So this is an opportunity. So when you first come into the room, just, be, hey, give a shout out. Yo, I'm, I'm from blah, 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 blah. What's up? You know what I'm saying? Because you never know who's in the house. So I think that's a good way of, of just starting to open that door and create conversations just to say like, yo, this is where I'm from. This is what's up. Because you never know how it always works. So that's really cool. I hope everybody's having a great um, Saturday afternoon if you're on the um, Pacific. I'm um, sorry, Saturday morning if you're on the Pacific. But if you're on the East Coast, it's definitely Saturday afternoon. So um, yeah, it's a great time, like I said, for us to just sit and have a conversation to talk about what's going on. Um, musically, if you got questions about gear, if you got questions about practice routines or um, how I, how can I do this, how can I get better? That's what this is all about. So I want to take this opportunity to really kind of bridge the gap and really just kind of connect and try to answer as many questions as possible. Um, and yeah, so that's what we do. So um, first, let me give you a little backstory of who I am. My name is Kerry Marshall, aka Kerry Too Smooth. I've been playing guitar for over 20 plus years. Um, I've worked with uh, people like Jason Drillo, Sean, um, what's his name? I can't even think of his name. Uh, Jason Drillo, Lettucey, Tori Kelly, uh, what's that dude? It's a big dude. I can't even think. This is so long ago. A host of people, whatever. I'm sorry, I have a brain for it. I got a lot. So this on the play table. Plus, my daughter should be coming any day or so. So I'm just thinking about all that stuff. I've been playing guitar for a long time. And I remember being on the other side of the road when I used to stand in the crowd, wanting to know and connect how it felt to be on stage. So um, I started to, you know, do this when I said I got to a point in my career I wanted to give back. And so that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, so I'm giving back, you know what I mean? So I wanna, I wanna just make the connection to be able to answer questions because sometimes that's all you need is just a question to be answered. What up, Shaquan Mel? What's good, what's good, what's good? So I finally got to see your music on Spotify. I appreciate that. Um, I just started playing guitar, so I'm green as can be. That's what, well, listen, we all gotta have a place to start. So if you're, if you're brand new to playing guitar, I highly suggest um, going to carriescamp.com we have a roadmap that's gonna help beginner guitarists get as far as you wanna go in your career. If you wanna just be an intermediate player, you wanna learn how to play locally, if you wanna learn how to play for major stream artists, we can help you get all the way to advance. That's what I specialize in, is really just trying to make the information um, digestible, you know what I mean? So that's really what it is, so that's what we like to do. Um, what's up, okay. What is the best, best place to learn licks from? Um, I like to say, so, for me, I like to use references with the number system. If you're not familiar with the number system, then I highly suggest going to carriescamp.com and really just um, really putting your hands and submerging yourself in those lessons and the number system. But I like to do stuff off of the two and I like to do stuff off of the six because they're kind of right underneath each other, especially when your root note is off of the five, off the um, off of the fifth string. So I like to do riffs off of that. But it's all about spaces. Though. Like when you're playing music, it's like double dutch and you got to time it whenever you can get into that point. All right, so congratulations. It says, um, I got the player Stratocaster HSS, and I'm starting to, um, and I've started to practice it standing per your advice. Oh, that's what's up. Yo, the HSS is a definitely, it's a beast. You know what I mean? It's a beast of a guitar, so that's what it does. Do you re request covers on your YouTube channel? Lucas, I get a lot of requests for YouTube, um, for covers. Um, I have a, a running list of stuff. So I, I'm not always doing songs. Sometimes I'm teaching concepts. So it just depends. So that's a good question. Are you planning on doing an instrumental album? Johnny, I have several instrumental albums already out and projects out. I have a song, a single that I put out years ago called Puppy Love. Uh, I've got another single that I put out called Sin Desir. Um, I've got several things. So if you search 
your Amazon, your iTunes, your Spotify, you'll see uh, Carry Too Smooth. You'll see some projects by me out there already. Um, Sean d -d 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 says, make the natural number system a lot easier to learn. Also, thank you for all of your lesson videos. They're so helpful. That's what it's all about. It's all about giving back. So I never used to pick, is it possible to palm strum without without one. Yeah, it's possible, but for certain styles and certain stretches that you have to do, it can be kind of uh, challenging. So, but it's, it's definitely possible. You could definitely do that. Okay, okay, do, do, do. Somebody says, have you ever played a shirt guitar? If so, how do you like them? I played a shirt guitar, I like them, they're really cool, but they're, you know, it's it's not for everybody. Every brand is not for everybody, so I think that they're cool. Uh, join the camp on the 12th Gospel Master class, The Truth, got a lot to learn, thanks. Ronnie, that's what it's all about, man. I I'm just wanna give you all the information so that way you can uh, use it and apply it to your playing. Uh, to go back, the person that I was thinking about, the artist that I was thinking about was Sean Kingston. I'm, I had a brain fart. It's been a long time since I've worked with him, but I've played for Sean Kingston as well. Um, do you have any advice on how to get over nervousness when you're playing in front of people? Um, I would say play in front of a mirror. Watch yourself, watch your tendencies, and then remember that like the, the reason why we probably get nervous is because we're not confident in what we're doing. So if you really know the material that you're doing, it doesn't matter. Um, they could look like whatever, like play in front of a mirror, practice playing in front of a mirror so you get used to just seeing yourself and what that feels like. Then also, if you know the music, you can't get nervous when you know what you're playing. Um, Carrie, thanks for sharing your gift and your wisdom um, with us as guitarists. Okay, how did you overcome the feeling of hitting a wall? So Robert, we all, we all get to that point. The thing about it is, is what I tend to try to do is I listen to other genres of music. To find something that inspires me to want me to go back and fall in love with the guitar or I go back over principles that I used to do plenty of times or now that I, I have a good repertoire of stuff playing songs that I used to play back in my day. So um, the other day I went on um, and pulled up Fred Hammond live. I remember watching this DVD like years ago and I went on YouTube and I started to see songs that I, I felt like at that particular time, like maybe five or six or seven years ago. I can't even tell maybe 10 years ago that I felt like I couldn't play. And then I was able to grab my guitar and start playing. So now I fell in love with like, oh man, I want to go over all of this Fred Hammond stuff all over again. So we all hit walls, but there's various ways that we we can get over it. Have you ever tried wireless guitar adapters before? Yeah, I've played wireless guitar adapters before. Everyone is different. Um, for certain shows where I have to move around a lot, then I will use a wireless. But it, I like to, I just like to plug in, like I have the amp, that presence right there. So, I mean, they're cool. Um, you just got, usually I have like whatever the techs that are setting up the stuff because I'm not like the most tech savvy person. I'll just be like, yo, I'm not sure which, which outlet it's supposed to go into, but I've used them before. What do you think about learning strictly from books? It's not for everybody. You know, some people, people learn differently, especially now there's so many different approaches to how you can learn. Um, so I, I'm not... One of these people like it's just strictly book, strictly book. Sometimes it's easier seeing, you know, some people are, are visual learners, some people are audio learners. Hey, what cab do you use on a Helix? I don't remember. I have to go back and like plug it in and look at it. So I'm not really sure. Good morning from Oakland. That's what's up. It says, do you ever practice solos to tracks? And if so, where do you find the good practice? Tracks. So if you're looking for good instrumental tracks, you can go on YouTube and find all types of uh, songs that you're looking for. Just type in the name of the song and type in the instrumental, and I'm sure you can probably find it. How do you make guitar sound tasty? What you need to do, Franco, is you need to go and sign up um, to Carrie's Camp. I can show you specifically how to do that. Go to Carrie'sCamp.com. That is K-E-R-R-Y-S. K-A-M-P.com and I'll, I'll show you specifically how to do it, how to make it sound more tasty, how more soulful, how more flavor in your playing. Um, have you any advice for me uh, for writing instrumental songs? For example, how do you start writing and have you have already, it says, have you already a, st a structure for a song? All right, so if you're, John, if you're thinking about that, you got to take it in sections, right? 
So I would listen to like bands like Snarky Puppy or stuff like that. People that do instrumentals already and start listening to how they they put sections together. You got to find something that feels good while you're writing. So it's just really about a journey. It's a conversation of what you want to have. You're really trying to convey a feeling and emotion. So I would just say take it in sections, start to sew it together so it feels good. Roll Tide, man. Do you have a swag shop? No, I don't, Paul. I don't have a swag shop. Chino Hills is in the house. Thank you for that, cuz. I got depressed uh, when things started back. Bored now about, I got you. That's what's up. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. What's your favorite guitar and pedal? Um, right now, I like Jazz Master Body Shapes, right? So those are my favorite guitars. I'm currently looking at something from Tom Anderson. Um, so I'm in the works of trying to get something built pretty soon. And my favorite pedal will probably be like any over, I like overdrive pedals right now because it just allows me to make the guitar to sing. So I think that's kind of like my vibe. Um, morning, I'm 43 years old and just started playing guitar. Uh, do you have any pointers for me? W. Thompson's. Thomas, I would say go to carriescamp.com um, and we have roadmaps that are gonna help brand new guitars. Doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter how much experience you have, that will help you. So that is K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. And let me help you grow in your craft because we've taken, we've taught thousands of guitarists all over the world. And I'm not just saying that because it sounds cool, but literally all over the world. We've brought people from South Africa, people from Australia, people from Asia, people from the UK, people from the States, from Canada. We're teaching everybody how to play guitar. It doesn't matter their, when, how long they've had the guitar or how old they are, or whatever. We have the nuggets and the tools that are gonna help you be successful. So I would definitely tell you to go check that out. What's up from South Korea? That's what's up, that's what's good. Okay. Um, will you jam for us right before the live stream ends? Uh, I could possibly do something like that. We'll see what's up. Uh, what are your favorite guitar albums, et cetera, genres? Uh, so Johnny, my favorite uh, genres right now happen to be r and I love gospel. Um, I do like some pop. It just depends. My favorite guitar is a jazz master body style. So I'm currently playing the iconic, but I'm also um, thinking about getting this Tom Anderson guitar that I, I'm a huge fan of. Uh, so that you'll probably see that at some point next year because I'm in the process of talking about woods and how to get it built. Um, so I think that I will answer your question. Which overdrive pedal do you have currently? I have I have an overdrive section. So I've got the Keeley d and I've got the Ari uh, d and and I've got the Tim Pierce, and I've also got uh, the Ultrafonic by Vertex. What is the best DOS for someone who is learning to record their music? Franco, it really could be anything. I mean, I like to use Logic. I know a lot of people like to use Pro Tools, Logic, Ableton, and there's so many more, but you just gotta find what's best for you. Uh, you ever become frustrated and felt like quitting when you first started out? Yes, all the time, Terrence. Uh, that's part of the growth. That's a part of what happens because you're trying to learn a new technique and you feel like you're getting frustrated. It's okay to take a pause for 20 minutes or a day and come back to it but you have to give yourself grace when you're learning a new process because it's it's new. You Like if you never learn how to uh, tie your shoes and you're trying to figure it out, it's gonna become frustrating. So give yourself some grace and realize that, listen, it's a, it's a process, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So let me work my way through it and I'll eventually get it. Can you demo how to properly use a looper? Um, I don't have a looper, um, but when I if somebody sends me one, I can show you how to use it. Doesn't matter which type of guitar I start with, acoustic electric. No, honestly, I feel like uh, acoustics are really cool because it's not, you don't have to buy nearly as much equipment and you can take them anywhere. Uh, what do you recommend to clean up and tighten up my pick accuracy? Just Robert, you really gotta work on it. So like I will focus in on working on playing on one string, playing on one string, practice doing like um, your, your dexterity exercises. Those are how you work on your pick accuracy. Which were the artists that influenced your music? 
Um, so early gospel, quartet music, and then R&B, and then there's some pop stuff. Some really good questions this morning. Um, if you're brand new to this channel, please subscribe. Please click the bell to be notified whenever um, we're dropping new stuff because I drop new videos weekly and I'm on here from time to time doing lessons, not just conversations, but I'm actually teaching you concepts. So um, I don't want you to miss out on that kind of stuff. Um, so um, also too, if you're brand new, when you're coming into this particular chat, just give a shout out where you're from because it's, it's a chance and opportunity for you to network. If you see somebody from the same area that you're at hey link up with them that's how you're going to continue to grow in your craft y'all might be able to be able to production team or make a band or a trade licks or whatever it might be that's what it's all about it's just about connecting so um you can definitely use this platform to connect um in this particular chat what are some typical practice sessions for you that you wish uh when you first started time wise um so W. Thomas, if you go to carriescamp.com i have plenty of practice routines that show for beginners that um, to really start focusing on, but like you, you got to learn the fretboard. You got to learn the chords. You got to learn the names of the, uh, the notes. You got to learn, there's a lot of stuff to learn. So it, going to carriescamp.com is going to help you structure out with the lesson. So you know, specifically how to go through all the different kind of stuff. What do you, just, could you do a gospel jam? Uh, yeah, at some point, definitely. Um, would you recommend the J? Jasmine, I've never played it, so I can't really recommend it. Yeah, so the one thing about me is I'm never going to recommend something that I'm not, I haven't played. I, I can't really give you any kind of positive feedback about. So I'm really kind of apprehensive on that kind of stuff. Uh, Real talk, thank you for all you do and your lessons in Carrie's Camp. Very informative. That's what's up. What gauge strings do you use? Um, on acoustic, I use 11s. All right. Right. And on electrics, I use tens. There we go. These are the strings that I use. I'm not endorsed by Diadarios. If any of y'all got a plug, you want to plug me up with Diadarios, I am down. But these are the strings that I use. These are strings that I like. These are the specific gauges for the specific kind of guitars that I use. Uh, when I see your chord play, I can hear chords and our melodies and top notes. It says, how do you develop your melodies uh, skill or ideas. My English is not very good. So Jerry, what I tend to do is I typically listen, especially if I'm just, uh, if I'm covering a song, what I try to do is I try to find chords that will, that flow with that song. I'm always want to ride that wave. But if I'm just kind of creating my own thing, I want to try to find chords that play with the melody that I'm hearing in my head. I might just be humming. Dun, 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 dun. I want to find chords that go, dun, 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 that fit that, that lane so that way I can kind of mirror the two together. So if I decide to go playing chords for a minute and then go to the solo, go back to the chords, you're, I'm not losing anything. Uh, do you have a jazz background? I've played jazz, I played for a jazz saxophonist for like three years, so I guess I could say I have somewhat of a jazz background. Uh, can you do a lesson on the walk down from the high register chords back? Uh, so Richard, if you go to carriescamp.com, uh, you'll see lessons that really spell out different kind of chord progressions that I talk about. That's K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P dot com. I love the Dario strings. Feels good on the fingers. Definitely. Hey, brother. You were doing a great service. Thank you. From Chicago. It says, uh, play main pop and some R&B. Um, is there a difference in chords you use for R&B versus other genres? Yes, there are definitely difference um, in the chords. I was on a jazz, sorry, sorry, not jazz, but on a pop gig with Jason Drillo, and the musical director was like, yo, you can't play like those major sevens because those don't necessarily fit. So I would have to find and try to change the voicings of, of my some of my chords because those chords don't necessarily fit with that genre of music. So you have to be very chord and genre specific whenever you're playing. You just can't play for the sake of playing. You have to play um, and be intentional about your playing. Any crazy wild stories from touring uh, that you can share with us and make us laugh just as well? Uh, yeah, so I would say like my first time I went out with Derulo, I don't look anything like Jason Derulo, but there was like a host of girls 
at the Morocco, it was a Morocco show. They thought I was Jason Derulo, so they were trying to like follow me. And I was like, yo, I'm not, I play for him. I'm not Jason Derulo. So I think that that was kind of a funny story, I guess. Uh, I'm already a member. What section is that in? So Richard, um, I would email support at carry2smooth.com. There's a search tab at the top, but I would email support at carry2smooth.com so they can show you. Another funny tour story. Uh, when I, not when I first got on, when I was on with Jason Derulo for a while, this is when the, the hoverboards were really popular and I didn't, I wasn't a cool guy yet because I didn't have my hoverboard. And everybody in the band would have hoverboards so they would be flying or riding from different gates or whatever. And I would literally have to run with all my stuff to try to keep up. So I looked like this like crazy person trying to run through the airport while they were all like leaning and flowing through. And I was like, man, I need to get one. But when I tried to get one, man, I fell like probably four or five times trying to ride that thing. I was like, you know what? This is not for me. I'm just going to, I'm going to have to left and right it. Just be on my, on the good foot. You know what I'm saying? Uh, do you prefer American style amps, Fender black faces over British style Marshall play? So it, it just depends. If I'm playing R&B, then I'm going to use probably more of an American style. But if I'm playing pop, then I'm going to use more of a British style. Uh, do you use loop stations with MIDI? No, I don't. Can you share a major fail performing live? All right, so my major fail that I had performing live, I wasn't as prepared as I thought I was. And so I didn't know all the changes for some of the music. And I was definitely exposed because it was like a guitar section. And I didn't, because I had not listened to it, I was not aware. So I was really exposed. And I said, never again will I ever put myself in a position like that. So... I've had those moments. And the keyboard player covered up for me. So like, luckily he kind of patted underneath to kind of make it sound like it was an intentional moment that I kind of fell out. But yeah, so that, that's happened before. What are your thoughts on inverted triads for r stuff? Like, I think they're cool. Like, if you can use it and it sounds great, then you should definitely use it. Uh, thanks so much for what you do. I always go to your videos for every time to watch them and learn something new, which is good. I really appreciate the work you do and the great inspiration. Thanks so much. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So, yeah, for those that are just coming in, hi, my name is Carrie. I've been playing for over 25 years. I played with uh, Sean Kingston, Jason Derulo, Tori Kelly. Uh, Melanie Fiona, Keanu Lede, uh, I played with Ty Reese, I've played with Two Chains, Ty Dolla Sign, Trey Songs, I played with a host of others. And so, what I'm doing on this particular platform is I'm just sharing information. I feel like I'm at a place in my career where I want to give back because I remember being in the crowd and wanting to know what it was like sometimes being on stage or how it was or what do you practice or what do you do because um, it was always my goal and my dream. So, now I'm at a place where I like to give back. So, that's why I do this kind of thing with conversation with Carrie. That's why I started Carrie's Camp. That's why I do my YouTube channel. It's not a chance for me to just get off and be like, I'm that guy and whatever. It's just, I just want to share information. Like, it's, that's all that I want to do. Oh, Frankfurt in the house. That's what's up. I used to be in Bomb Holder. You know what I mean? So, um, if you could pick only one rig, would you pick your favorite acoustic? Electric all day. I'm not electric all day. I love acoustic, but I'm picking I'm picking electric all day. Um, how does it feel uh, to take your fingers and accustom an E-shaped bar chord, especially with the minor? It says, how does it feel to take your fingers to get accustomed to an E-shaped bar chord, especially minor? Uh, how does it feel? Oh, how long does it take? Uh, it just depends. Everybody's everybody's different. You know, it doesn't take everybody the same amount of time. It's just how long does it take. So that's what you, you just got to practice until you can get it. Uh, that's what I need to know. Thanks. For sure.
my God, funny. I was just practicing how does it feel on D'Angelo in that moment. You said it. Oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. I like old school Al Green tutorials, examples, let's stay together. Cool. Ray, I feel you. Got any major projects coming out? Um, I've got some stuff, but I can't really talk about it just yet because I haven't got clearance to share the information yet. But once I get clearance, then you guys will definitely know. My dad and my uncle play um, with the Latin salsa. They said, hey, so you did it. Still, okay. Yeah, I was in the military for eight years. Uh, when you play gospel quartet and you were in the major pentatonic pattern and the relative minor six, do you mute those notes or play them without muting it? W dot smalls, it all depends on the song. I can't really give you, you know, guidance unless I hear the song. So it just all depends on the song. I do not use a fuzz pedal to enhance my clean tone. Nope. What does a tutorial on Carrie's camp? Oh, I'm sorry. Can you explain using diminished chords and passing chords and substitution? So if you want to know how to do that, you should go to carriescamp.com. I have a whole lesson that's talking about diminished, how to use them in passing chords. Uh, it's K-E-R-Y-S-K-M-P.com. What type of jazz master um, you have standing there behind you? So this is a conic um, elegante. What would you consider a solid practice routine? So if you would go to carriescamp.com, I have plenty, it's depending on what skill level you're at, of different practice routines. That is K-E-R-Y-S-K-E-M-P.com. That'll show you specifically because I could give you a practice routine right now, but depending on your skill level, it may not necessarily work. Just dropping in to show the channel some love. Appreciate it. Always wondered about uh, your hammer-ons and your pull-offs while doing bar chords. Could you show, slow it down one day? Uh, J-A-S, if you want to see all of that, slow it down. Go to carriescamp.com. I have plenty of lessons that show you how do I do hammer-ons, how I do pull-offs and all the kind of other stuff. And you can slow the video down to your own liking. Um, Indiana House, thanks for sharing your knowledge. I see and hear um, progress, but not where I want to be. Uh, thank you. Kwame, you just got to keep keep at it, man. I'm telling you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to eventually get there. You're going to have an aha moment, and you're just going to be able to be like, man, I can pick it up and play anything I want. What plans do you have in the work um, after quarantine is over for gigs and workshops? So the thing is just to continue to grow uh, Carrie's Camp. Also, if whatever artist that calls and it makes sense, then I'll go on the road with them. But honestly, man, it's just about being a, a dad. Uh, my daughter should literally be here any day now. So I'm going to focus in on being a father first, um, a teacher uh, second, and I'm always going to be where I'm working in the studio now. I work and cut records every day. So I'm always working on different kind of multiple projects. So that's, that's going to stay constant. So once COVID lifts up, whatever, then I may go back out on the road. So do you ever get tired of, of answering the same questions from us? No, man, I love it. <laughs> I'll be feeling bad. <laughs> Uh, I appreciate it, man. But that's a part of that's a part of what you do, man. Because everybody is new to the channel or hasn't heard that kind of question, so that's what I have to do. That's part of what goes on um, as being uh, a public servant in this particular capacity, but answering questions. Uh, you've been a major help to me, oh, man. I appreciate that, man. That's what it's all about. Sweet. I've been following your channel for a long time. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Uh, let me see if I can find this. Where was it? So I'm trying to find this. I don't want to even play some gospel. Play this Fred Hammond John was playing yesterday. <laughs> Who's your favorite? Your course head group? Man, I love the Canton Spirituals, man. Like, I'm a huge Canton Spirituals fan, you know what I mean? So.
W. Walls. If you want to see a quartet drive demonstrated, you should definitely sign to Carrie's camp. Not only am I demonstrating, I'm talking about it, but I have several players that play for some prestigious quartet groups that are teaching in a gospel guitar masterclass. So I would definitely check that out. Um, can you give me a few names of the overdrive pedals you have? I have a Keeley DM, an RE by Keeley pedals. I have a Tim Pierce. Um, I have the Superphonic by um, Vertex. I had quit playing for a long time, but watching your videos made me want to come back. That's what it's all about. That's what's what it's all about. How long did it take you to get um, to reasonably get? That's a relative question, man. I mean, honestly, I didn't have solid teachers. So depending on if I had solid teachers, it may have not taken me nearly as long. I'm thinking about getting to a point where I want to play in a church or something, um, but I don't want to be the main guitarist. I just want to learn. Is that a thing? Yeah, definitely. You should just talk to the band and just be like, yo, tell them what your expectations are, what you're looking for, what you're looking to try to do. And how long into playing guitar did you have your first professional gig? First professional? Uh, I think I was 14. Can you share with us, uh, can you share with, what is your go-to clean setting for a Fender Prince? So Robert, anytime I'm doing anything uh, clean, I never have any kind of dirt in it. I'm always, it depends on the amp. So Princeton amps just depend on how I would have to plug in and play. Um, but I'm always mindful of how I don't have it too thin, so I, and I don't have it too muddy. So I like to have it just right. You know, I'm like Goldilocks. I like to have it just just right. Um, All right, cool. That's where we'll start. That's what we'll do. Some gospel guitar. So this is a Fred Hammond. This is Fred Hammond live. I used to watch this DVD back in the day all the time. So this is a groove that I like. Um, I'll play that towards the end. Uh, you got your first gig at 14. I'm 16 and a beginner. Yeah, but I started playing guitar, man, when I was... Honestly, I've had a guitar since I was like six, but I really started playing when I was like 11. But I was a part of a quartet group. So um, I just... I, quartet was my thing. So they liked what I was doing and they just hired me. You know what I mean? I'll take a few more. Where do you usually keep your tone? My my tone, my volumes are always on 10. I'll never change it unless it's just like, I had a PRS, like Custom 24. I would have to back it off because it was like a little too bright for me, but um, my volume is always on 10. My tone is always on 10. If someone wants to enter R&B, how would you advise them? I would tell them they would need a good teacher. And I would suggest that they would go to carriescamp.com um, so that way I can help them and shape them. I've been playing R&B like for forever. And I'm not saying this just to say this, but I feel like I'm one of the best R&B guitarists, if not the best R&B guitarist um, in the world, because I'm gonna really show you how to play. And there are a lot of people when I, I've seen other sites and I've seen other people that emulate the styles that I'm already doing. And like, they don't teach it as well because they don't know that they, I mean, if you wanna know how to get the sauce, you gotta go to the person that knows how to make the sauce. You can get generic. And it might be all right, but it ain't going to really do it. That's why I get a lot of calls for a lot of production deals uh, when I'm playing on different records because people want the original sound. They don't want somebody like, you know, that can kind of make it sound like whatever they want the real thing. So same for teaching. You know, I'm going to show you specifically how to do it. I'm going to show you verbatim. I'm not going to try to show you like this is how you could and this is what I do. I'm, I'm going to show you exactly what I do because I want you to be able to have it and be able to play the same way that I play it. As a new guitarist, um, what would be the main difference between a $400 and $800 or a 12? Uh, playability, what the guitar can do, woods, choices, tones. Uh, there's a lot of differences. A $400 guitar may be, um, it may not be able to easy to play, maybe really hard on your hands. $800 is a little bit better, but like this Jazz Master versus like a cheap jazz master, you're not gonna get the craftsmanship and quality and playability of a guitar like this for like $400. It's just not gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? So um, you're just gonna, when you pay for something, nine times out of 10 is gonna be better quality than it would be if you didn't pay for it. You know what I'm saying? Pay full price for it. Mm -hmm. 
the fourth and fifth position on the strat. Sometimes I use the fourth um, on the strat. The fifth position, mainly when I'm soloing. Uh, play with a few artists on and off uh, and on their albums. Awesome. But I'm still going to join the camp. That's what's up, Perry. That's what's up. That's what's up. Let's just keep it real. But R&B guitar player, would you suggest checking out to grow as a player? Me. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not gonna hold you, no cap. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm legit, bro. I'm legit, I'm the truth. I can show you everything you need to know how to play guitar, probably better than a lot of your favorites. Cause I'm gonna take the time to make sure you get it. That's the difference. Other people are just tell you what to do and not really work with you. I'm gonna work with you until you get it. That's the whole point. I'm not just going to be like this. Or you just play an A major seven and then you go da 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 da. Like, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to work with you. You know what I mean? So that's the difference. When you come when you come over here, I'm going to make sure you got it because I know what it's like when people just kind of tell you random information and don't really tell you, show you how to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it. So if you got any questions when it comes to R&B specifically, neo soul or gospel, you should come here. I'm no cap, like I'm, I'm better than anybody else because I'm gonna take the time and I care. That's the difference is because I care. Not saying that other people don't, they just, I, I used to use this analogy all the time for like when I played sports, especially football, right? You know, or basketball, you got those players that go out there that have a lot of heart. And they just wanna go out there and they got a lot of heart. They don't really know how to play that well. They just got a lot of heart. But then you got those ones that are really talented, they got it in their hands. So. I tell people a lot of times you have teachers out there, you have guitarists out there that have it in their hearts. They want to do it, but it ain't here, my nigga. Like, it ain't here. I got it in both. You know what I mean? So if I'm, you come to the source, you come to the well, the water's going to be better than any other water that you've ever had before. So I promise you, and I'm not trying to be arrogant. And I'm not just, I'm just telling you because I have personal experience. I even tried to hire some other guitarists that I thought were on the same level that could teach. And they cannot teach. It just is what it is. Everybody ain't got it. You know what I mean? Like, I can't play as well as, let's say, some people like, let's just say, Mateus Asado's got some stuff that he does that I can never do. I get it. I understand it. I can appreciate that. So what I'm not going to do is try to compare myself and be like, I'm better. I'm like, that's just relative. What I'm saying is when it comes to teaching, everybody can't teach just like everybody can't play. So one thing that you'll get when you come to Carrie's camp or you come when you come talk to me specifically it's I care, so I'm really going to show you how to do it because that's what it takes. Everybody's at a different level. You can't just blanket statement everybody whenever you're talking, whenever you're teaching. And that's one thing that I've learned over the years of doing this versus other people who kind of just kind of blanket statement everything. You have to really take the time to really show people how to do it at their level. Break it down. Make it digestible because if you don't make it digestible, you're going to miss the mark. All right, we had a couple people uh, respond and then I'm gonna hop in and play this really quickly. So, somebody said, now you're preaching. I appreciate that. <laughs> if you wanna listen, man, honestly, there's so many artists. If you, you're not talking about teacher, you're talking about music. There's so many artists, man. Like, you just, what I would tell you to do is go on to Spotify and just type in R&B. You can listen to 90s R&B, 2000s, or you can listen to stuff that's current. There's plenty of people out there. Oh, man, I appreciate the love people talking about my teaching, man. I appreciate that. appreciate that. Uh, well, is your family? My family as well. Appreciate that. Do you have any advice on how to improve on moving um, one chord vamps around fluidly, i.e. comping, multiple voicings? Yeah, so whenever you're doing something like that, you want to listen to how the chords are played. That's the biggest and the most important thing is when you're listening to how chords are played so that way it makes the most sense. You want to layer your chord so they, um, you you don't have to overcomplicate it. It's just all about um, placement, right? So let's just do this. Let's just do this. Cancel. Let's go into 
Because sometimes, you know, seeing is believing or hearing is believing. Let's open something recently. Let's just say... Dope, appreciate you learning. It says, join Carrie's camp um, when it first came out. Dope, dope. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, if you're... I said, I like watching your teaching style and understand exactly this is I've been... I had guitar teachers, mainly older guys and players that seem to feel outdone um, when I learned something that they taught. Cool. All right, so this is what I'm talking about when you're listening to like chord structure, right? So let's just let's just keep it real organic. So when you're listening to like chords, so I want I hear that I'm playing like I'm like. It's simple, but I want to make sure that I'm finding something that complements it. find what fits you got to find how you can sew those pieces together that's what's going to make the music feel good and you have to sometimes what i like to do is when i'm creating new guitar parts i like to loop the section so that way i can see how it's going to feel how it's going to sound and if it doesn't feel good to me right here then i'm not going to do it just because you can play a lot of stuff doesn't mean it's going to feel and sound right so you got to find stuff that kind of flows in and out of the changes that's what you want to do what you want to focus in on um, are there any strings on the market that doesn't need? So it's Kwame, it's not about uh, the strings that need to be tuned. Maybe the intonation on your guitar is jacked. Maybe there's a lot of things that can, when it comes to tuning, um, outside of just the strings. All right, I'm going to take one more question and then I'm going to get ready to get up out of here. Okay. My interest in R&B, quartet, and neo-gospel. What do you think about, or have you ever heard of Jabari Johnson? I know Jabari personally. Uh, do you go through that phase of just not being able to play by ear? Yeah, when I first started, it's it's part of the process. It's like, remember, you're learning a different technique or you're learning a new technique, so give yourself some grace. I've been playing in church for a few years and I feel like I'm stuck. Um, should I quit till I get better? <laughs> no, Ronnie, you should never quit. You just need to get a new teacher. You need to get somebody that's gonna show you how to play. That's why you need to go to carriescamp.com. That is K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. So somebody can help show you how to, how to get over the hump to really start to dig in and get better as a player. You shouldn't quit. You should never quit. Uh, which software is it? I'm using Logic. I'm using logic. All right, cool. So I'm going to play y'all out because y'all, that's what y'all asked. So I'm, it's just the Fred Hammond joint that I'm, I was working on. If you go on my YouTube, I'm sorry, my YouTube, by Instagram, you'll see it. Um, Carry Too Smooth. That's everything for me is always the same. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's Carry Too Smooth. All right, so here we go. So we
right. Love y'all. Have a good one.